Hi, and welcome to TMI Simulation Solutions Maritime Webinar Series, in which we will discuss with experts in the maritime industry the future of shipping. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic created new norms, presenting new growth opportunities, incorporating the fourth industrial revolution in sensing, automation, robotics and communication. Through our webinar, we seek to help you to unlock the potential of the digital technologies and solutions in the maritime and logistic industries to improve operator skills, productivity and performance available to help you reach smart port revolution and deep digital transformation. In our first webinar, TMI Simulation Solutions, the K Peninsula University of Technology and the Shipping and Transport College Group in South Africa would like to celebrate the role of seafarers as an integral part of the maritime industry. It is crucial that we always cherish the human element of shipping and ensure that education is the right combination of knowledge, skills and appropriate behavior to assure the safety and happiness of our seafarers. The unsung hero of the maritime, the most important component of the maritime value chain. I'm very honored to introduce our guest speakers of this webinar. Let me introduce you to our first guest speaker, Mr. Patrick Lamboy. After 17 years tenure in South Africa Navy, Patrick was appointed as a captain in the South African Police Service, Operational Commander, Sea Border Night uh, Control, Division Operational Response Services, and as ex Naval Chief Petty Officer. Patrick served in various posts on board combat vessels and fortunately retired his sea legs to share his experience and knowledge with the students of the Tibet Sector Maritime Studies. Running, in, running the STCSA Maritime Training Center, Mr. Clambo enjoys seeing young people excelling in all aspects in their life. An adjustment for the Navy way of doing things, Mr. Clambo leaves by the quote, in education should not be feeling of the pale, but lighting of a fire by William Butler Yeats. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you for accompanying us today. Let me introduce you to our second guest speaker, Mr. Patrick Wells. The maritime career of Patrick commenced in 1984 with the South African Navy, which he continued to serve for 14 years as a combat officer specializing in anti-surface, air and anti-submarine warfare. He resigned from the Navy as a commander and joined the South African Port Services, holding positions such as Togmaster, Marine Pilot, Fleet Operations Manager, and Assistant Harbor Master. He was also responsible for training all the South African Marine Pilots for a period of three years before taking up a position in 2012 with the ASTC Group as the Deputy Dean of Academic Affairs at the International Maritime College in Oman. Patrick returned to South Africa in July 2017 to take up the position of Managing Director of STC South Afri Southern Africa. Sorry. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you for accompanying us today. And now let me introduce you to our third guest speaker, Ms. Teresa Williams. Theresa Williams made history by becoming the first female marine pilot of the African continent in 2001. Theresa is currently the head of the Maritime Studies Department at CPUT and has been active in the maritime industry for more than 20 years. Over the past two decades, she has progressed from being a ship navigator officer to becoming the first woman to pilot a ship in Africa. She has worked as a mar marine operations mar manager at Transnet and has had opportunities as a mar maritime specialist to develop and deliver maritime training materials to the Western and Central Africa region and as part of a European Union initiative. Welcome, Theresa. Thank you for accompanying us today. So before we begin, I would like to request our audience to share their questions on the chat 
as well as to congratulate our guests for such an ex exceptional career path. Please make sure to share your contact details for our chat for us to share more information about SCCSA, CPUT, or TMI, Training and Consulting Services. And now I hand over the control to Mr. Patrick Wells uh, to lead today's forum. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mariana, for a very warm welcome. It's an absolute privilege for us to be part of your first webinar. It's very exciting and a warm welcome to all the attendees that have taken the time out to listen to our story. I think with Teresa being such a pioneer within the African continent, it would be absolutely wonderful for her to share her experience with us to set the tone for this afternoon's webinar. Teresa? Thank you very much, Patrick, and thank you very much, TMI Solutions, for this opportunity to be able to share our stories here today. And hopefully one or two lives will be touched by our journeys and will be influenced to join the maritime industry. So, yes, I was a pioneer in the industry, and um, that was possible through various opportunities that I received on my path. Now, the maritime sector or choosing maritime was not my first choice. Uh, my first choice was actually nursing. So, but when I applied to nursing school, I, my application was not accepted because I didn't meet the minimum requirements. And um, at the time I was offered a transnet bursary to study maritime. And um, so what became my second choice and I would say ultimately became my first choice when maritime chose me. Um, so I consider myself to be a sailor or seafarer by accident, totally accidental, as none of the previous generations in my family has been sailors. So this is, is quite significant for me personally. Um, and then one door saying yes to, to my second choice opened up such a brand new world for a youngster coming from Cape Town. And um, I've been able to have local and international opportunities um, one of the standout experiences for me is when I was able to understudy the Dutch pilots in Rotterdam during um, on the job pilot training in the late 90s. And um, so I'm very, very fortunate to have made it thus far. And um, prior to pilot teach, I was able to become a tag master as well and um, ultimately found my way into management and of course coming full circle into academia. But for sure, there were some challenges along my path and um, specifically, I would like to mention three. And, and this is really um, to encourage young sailors out there or students or learners who are still in high school um, to know on your path, you know, there'll be some challenges, but if you can rise above it, you will ultimately still be able to become what you're supposed to be. So during my time as a trainee, pilot um, and also as a seafarer coming into the industry. There was a lack um, of structured mentorship and coaching. And also secondly, being the only female most of the time was quite a lonely journey. It would have been nice to have more females around me, youngsters at that time. And um, also thirdly, not being, you know, being sure of the career path opportunities that was lying ahead. And of course, appreciating I'm now looking in hindsight. Um, but so how did I overcome, you know, those challenges, those challenges and um, how was I able to proceed to be able to succeed? And and when I look at my life in hindsight, I would say there was there were about three areas in my life that I needed to master personally. Um, firstly, I, I believe that I have a very strong sense of self leadership. So I steer my own life. I drive my life. Yes, with God's help, but I need to decide how am I going to lead myself personally? Um, the path that I'm on, the path that I have chosen, um, I knew that I needed to succeed for others to follow, so giving up was not an option. Secondly, um, I'm always at this T-junction of competence versus entitlement. Um, I'm a kind of person that I, I want to study so that I can have the required um, documentation and qualifications to be able to throw my CV in the ring to apply for the job and to be interviewed and to 
as a result of such a process, you know, becoming the successful candidate um, versus entitlement where I can say I'm black and I'm female and based on that I need opportunities. Um, but the person, me as Teresa, always want to compete to believe because I believe I'm capable um, and I'm competent. And I needed to master that in my life. And thirdly, having a uh, choosing to respect my seniors, my authority on board my vessels as a cadet, as an officer, as a pilot, um, the senior people I was working with, respecting their leadership, respecting their, their mentorship, their guidance, respecting regulations. So I believe that is that is how I want to to encourage the youngsters. Over to you, Patrick. Thank you, Teresa. What a warm, uh, heartwarming and, and, and wonderful story. And you're an absolute, absolute inspiration, uh, especially being a pioneer in the field, um, being the first uh, woman pilot in Africa. I mean, that's just such such a powerful story, especially for the young ladies in, in, in the world that want to get out and do it. It's absolutely stunning. And, you know, our, our paths are so similar. I've known you since since the late 90s when you were a uh, understudy pilot with the STC group back then, we worked together in Transnet and now here we are in academia and, and, and leading um, or encouraging and guiding students wanting to come in, in the system. But uh, even though our paths are very similar, mine is quite diverse from yours because for, if, if I take my personal example, um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do um, in, in terms of, of my career. From a very young age, I was very, very fortunate to be exposed to the, to the ocean from a, as a young boy. So I always had an, had an aim to go to sea. I wanted to do absolutely nothing else. The only thing that stood in my way was, of course, my, my schoolwork because it really didn't have too much relevance for me at that stage. Um, I just wanted to get out and do exciting things. I wanted to go see the world. And I remember in 1983, sitting in the port of Cape Town, um, you can see the image behind me, um, at a, rec a recruitment or a manning officer's uh, office for a big shipping company in South Africa at that stage. And he had a look at my report card and he just said to me, you know, based on your on your grades, there's no ways I'd be allowed to, to um, employ you. But he called a, a young engineering cadet and he said, look, just take Patrick around the ship, show him around, let's, let's see what happens. And he did for nearly three hours. We just went absolutely everywhere. And it was the first ship I had ever stepped on in my whole life. And I was brought back to the, the, the crew manager's um, uh, office and I was just so excited. And it completely turned him around and he said, you know what, I'll probably get fired, but just based on your enthusiasm, I'm going to employ you anyway. And he did, I got an offer of employment, which was just wonderful. But at that stage, it was containers, or guns, containers of guns, and being a young 17-year-old guy, guns got the better of me, and I went off into the Navy, and, and for 14 years had a wonderful career. So my point is that although your maritime was your second second choice, it is exactly if you were destined to be here. If it doesn't matter if you're a little bit afraid of, of what you want to do, if you've got a dream, get out there and, and go and do it. It's going to work for you. And, you know, having come into the maritime environment after that, I excelled at absolutely everything. So it's just wonderful to be here. And now we're 20, 30, 40, nearly 40 years down the line. And here we are educating youngsters and guiding people in, a, in an appropriate manner. And Patrick and I served together in the Navy for many years together. We are colleagues at STC. Um, and I know Patrick's story is also very diverse from both your and mine. So maybe now is a perfect opportunity to, to, for us to bring Patrick into the conversation to be able to allow him to share his, his very unique story as well. Patrick, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Patty. Uh, thank you very much, TMI uh, Simulation Solutions for the opportunity. Yes, very, very, very different than, than uh, both of you. Mine is basically, you know, completing an application during my matric year um, and then was myself off the next year to the South African Navy. Uh, 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 18 year old boy from the Cape Flats of Cape Town now found himself uh, in basic training in Saldana. And I think at that time it was the biggest challenge for me to find myself away from from family. 
that at first, you know, being in such a close Playboy family, I was the first mariner uh, to be to be actually placed or embark a career in the maritime studies. Then, and how did I overcome that? You know, that home, uh, that homesickness, it is just for you to adapt. And I think those, uh, that is one of the char characteristics that a seafarer should have, is to, to be adaptable. You need to adapt to people, you need to adapt to work environment. Um, and through that, you actually need to have good communication skills. You know, all that will really, really support you just to give you that foundation and that, and that stepping stone, getting yourself uh, forward and also to become very ambitious. You need to be ambitious and, and, and say to yourself, this is what I mean now and that is what I want to achieve. So further to that, I then, you know, spent wonderful years on board warships, on, the, on board strike rock, on board the SS Amatola, the first COVID that was built for South Africa. Then in the latter part, just before I exited the Navy, I was uh, the head of the Department of Radio Communications and I had opportunity to train the lower ranks to work the combat system. And I think that's where the passion of education and training just stuck with me. Um, I was in, so fortunate to, to mention it, I was in headhunted by the South African Police Services while I did went through interviews in that and then was selected to become a captain in the service. Now you can find yourself, you know, I exit as a chief pet officer, a non-commissioned officer, then became an officer in the in the police. Um, what a step from being operational to strategic. And I just had to again put myself into, into that situation and drive and just drive with it. So those are the factors and the Navy gives you the foundation to build on that continuously. So good communication skills to adapt to where you are as quick as possible. And also when you on board ships, when you meet with people, you will meet people with different cultures. And on board ships, it's a multicultural environment. You need to respect other people's cultures and adapt to those cultures immediately. So thank you very much for that, Patty. Thank you, Patrick. What a wonderful story as well. And and I think that between the three of us, we've just got such such vast experience to to be able to share. And I think we've we've achieved a point in our life where where we need to be able to to pass that on to generations behind us. Patrick, both you and and Teresa um, made some really pertinent points. And I I think the maritime industry is one of the the only industries where you get such immense uh, responsibility and authority at a very, very young age. Uh, you look at, at youngsters, 23 year old, they are officer the watches, whether it be in the, on the bridge or whether it be in the engine room, but those are massive, massive, massive responsibilities. At two o'clock in the morning, you cannot phone your parents for advice. You cannot phone a friend. It's you out there. And the only way we're gonna be able to get people out there is to train them properly, to mentor them properly. And Teresa, you you will recognize being in, in academia and, and getting guys through um, through the, the university diploma and bachelor degrees. Uh, you watch these guys come come in or the, the, the youngsters come in and really they are nervous, they they a little bit insecure, and you are just absolutely you you watch them exit in a couple of a couple of years as confident young officers. Over to you, I'd like to hear your view. Sure, absolutely, Patrick. I mean, one of the most heartwarming and fulfilling experiences for me um, as a head of department in academia is graduation day. You know, when I think of the emotional days of my own graduations over the years and watching our youngsters graduate. And graduation day reminds me of, of one story. You know, we all come into life with a story, your birth story. And um, we decide, do we get stuck in our birth story or do we move on and, and live our lives to, to, to do what destiny decided? And I mean, my, my birth story started with uh, being born in a caravan. And, um, you know, as a result of the circumstances around my birth, I was never able to learn how to swim. So when I joined the industry, I couldn't swim. But I said, yes, anyway. 
Um, so one needs a bit of guts, you know, and, and just decision making to say I'm going to do it anyway. So I decided to, to change the narrative of my future, not based on my birth story, but in spite of it anyway. Um, so we all have a decision to make. I've turned the narrative of being born into caravan in, in a caravan to say maybe that's why I like traveling so much. Um, so any youngster listening to us today, you can do it. You can go beyond the circumstances of the conditions you were born into um, and just make a decision to triumph and, and to thrive beyond that. Um, thank you. Over to you, Patty. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for Teresa. Just uh, amazing. I mean, you're you're an absolute inspiration, and I think you've got so much to give to the the maritime community and and your stories and and where you come from. I think so many people could learn from you. And Patrick, I know you've also had some um, some very difficult times. You grew up in a in a very rigid a rigid military environment, but also within the police services. Perhaps you'd like to share a story with us as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Patty. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, when I exited uh, the police services, I uh, I joined the TVET College sector and I became the the campus manager of maritime studies for Nordling College. It was based in the same building as we are. We are at at the moment, and and I think through those six years being at Nordling, that's where I saw the difference. You know, on these kids' faces when they when they leave the training the, the training environment, and they got they get these job opportunities at sea, coming from you know, not even coming from such a background, but just acquiring those skills and then make it for them and 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 use it uh, as as they carry on. Um, and I'm just thinking now, you know, when we when I left the Northing College and I joined SCCSA, the the changes now that we bring to these kids through government project funding initiatives, we if I can share the one story, we we received funding in 2017 to support engineering TVET stu TVET college students, and it was about 60 of them. We what we call we marinize them, so we supported them with all the, the Siemens books, the Samsung Medicals requirements, the SCCW course, the two trade subjects, the Able Seafarer and the Able Sea Seafarer Tech and Engine programs. But when when the pro when we exited the program after two years, you could see the difference in how these kids have grown uh, during those training phases: the formal training of theoretical, then practical pro, uh, onboard training. And one of the successes we can have is that that 86 percent that we got employed, 48 of those candidates that we recruited got employed eventually at the end of at at the end of the program. So um, you know most most grat gratified that we could see you know the 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 confidence how these kids were growing, and 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 just how they've matured actually over this period, for sure. Thank you, Patty. Thank you very much, Patrick. Again, a, a wonderful story of success. And of course, I was also part of the, our, 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 our very best story ever of taking a guy basically off the street and eventually after a period of a couple of couple of uh, weeks, um, getting him onto passenger ships as an employed um, a member of a ship's team. So that's absolutely amazing. And I think it goes back a little bit uh, to wh where we were um, a little earlier in the conversation regarding the fear, regarding not knowing what you, you what you're up to. Uh, Teresa, you quite correctly said, you know, you didn't know how to swim when you came into the maritime industry. You know, it was a fearful position for you to be in. Um, I alluded to my really poor results at school, but if you turn that around and you're doing something that you love, nothing is a challenge. Absolutely nothing. You become a, 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 a sponge. You actually just want to absorb and absorb and absorb more and more and more. So learning is absolutely um, not a problem for you. So that you find your, your Excel. So my message to the youngsters that, that will hopefully watch this webinar or get access to this webinar is just follow your dreams. Don't be afraid. 
If you love what you're doing, it's a journey. It's no, no challenges at all. And maybe, maybe what I could do is um, just we have one round before we go to the q and I, I believe we have a, a question from Adrian um, and maybe we can we can have a look at it. Um, and well, let's have a look at it now. What initiatives are uh, ongoing in Africa to make a maritime sector more uh, attractive to young people? Um, that's a that's an absolutely fantastic uh, question, Adrian, and, and thank you very much for that. Um, I, uh, Teresa, may I, I request that you take that question uh, because you're from the education side, we're more from the training side, so you're really training people for careers. So if you would. Sure, Patrick. Um, there's quite a bit going on around Africa to make the, the sector more attractive for young people. Firstly, um, countries around Africa are, are, are getting their houses in order um, because GDPs of Africa is also related to maritime. So um, politically, governments need to have support around maritime for it to be able to grow. So first, countries need to get onto IMO's white list, which they are beginning to do. More and more countries are on there. And as a result, um, the, there's more maritime training and education that can take place. I know of a number of countries. Um, if you look at Ghana, um, Morocco, um, and also Kenya, um, they are partnering with uh, international uh, ship owners um, and ship managing companies to be able to place cadets um, at sea and for them to be able to be trained um, as cadets as they come out of, of the education system. But, but also in addition to that, there's a lot of research taking place. Africa is evolving um, in terms of research uh, around renewable energy, um, we see in terms of gas and, and oil and gas and what is happening around Africa on our coastlines. And um, so besides sea going, uh, one don't just want to uh, market uh, education in maritime for sea going purposes only, but there's so much um, that young people and also just people who are already um, within the system to, to study high education qualifications in maritime to be able to use um, on land as well and to be able to be become part of the research community um, around global warming um, and digital technology, um, renewable energy and, and other aspects of the environment. Thank you. Over thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that, Teresa. That was that was a, a great response. And I know Patrick works also very, very closely with um, secondary schools uh, in and around the Cape Town area. Just last weekend, he went and did a maritime awareness program. Uh, we work a lot with the cruise liner industries who use our business and, and our premises to do maritime awareness and, and uh, attract people into the industry. So so there is a lot. I think more can happen. But of course, we uh, with digital technology, it becomes a little bit easier. We are running out of time. Maybe what I can ask is from Teresa and Patrick to give just one last comment, one piece of advice, just one takeaway from this uh, webinar to anybody that uh, would be listening or is uh, wanting to be in the, the sector. Yes, sure, Patrick. And ju just to link my last uh, punching note, I would say to what I was saying just now around research, um, I would really encourage any anybody, any person, irrespective of age, who want to join the sector, who want to get into um, upskilling your qualifications, research about what is going on in the industry, not only locally, also globally, so that when you make a decision to join Maritime, you come in not only with an expectation of what the industry can do for you, but that you also come with your bag of tricks, with your determination to add value to the industry, to say, I'm going to try and find solutions for areas of research where research is lacking, where solutions are lacking, so that ultimately we can create solutions that provide job opportunities, that provide entrepreneurial opportunities um, for our people. Thank you. Fan fantastic. Thank you, Teresa. Patrick, maybe just because you're so inter uh, uh, intricately involved, maybe you could give a bit of feedback quickly. Yes, uh, thank you, Patty. Um, and and I'm, I'm going to start with, you know, the career awareness. It is important that we need to attract new talent into the sector. 
Um, but it's also important that we close off that process in terms of career career awareness. You know, we need to properly prepare the individuals, especially youth, and tell them exactly what what they will find uh, on board a ship, and uh, and how it how it would be to 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 adapt and and, and live and work with other other cultures. Um, you know, further further to that, the the most gratified moment I think anyone can get can get out of it is is through my first experience the day that my late father you know stuck my or placed my ranks onto my shoulders what a proud moment for me because i was uh, i came from the cape flats as just a young boy going through all these foundation phases but still continuously drive through ambition and, and and know what i wanted at the end of the day now i'm in i'm in education and training I support others that also come from maybe even similar and better backgrounds from myself, but sure, that's what we can do as mentors and coaches and just encourage these kids that say, this is where you are at. And, you know, this world is real and oyster. Um, it's an unknown sector, but still we can support them further to, to embark a career in maritime studies. Thank you. Patrick, thank, thank you very much for that. That was a, a, a great answer, but it, it also was like a little bit of a takeaway. So while we have you, while we have you on a roll, um, you've got one sentence or two sentences at the most to do a, a quick takeaway uh, for, the, for, for the youngsters. And then after that, we'll be followed by Teresa. Thank you, Patty. No, um, a quick takeaway, you know, remain humble. You know, grab the opportunity that you have, remain ambitious, and and know this is a sector that you can you can no one can say no to you in the sector. So um, I, I want to wish you uh, everyone very well. If you want to apply for for uh, becoming part of the sector, so just go for it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Patrick. Um, for me, the takeaway is, and again, I'm always humble to be able to engage with, with people in general who want to enter the sector. So um, choose something in the industry, see where you can um, add a contribution and where you can make a difference so that other people can also follow in your, foot, in your footprints. I'm very happy that even though I started my journey as the only female in many aspects, I left sufficient footprints on my path for others to be able to follow me. Um, so, so that is it, you know, just come in to make a difference. Thank you. That, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Teresa. And um, my last takeaway before we go on to the Q&A is reach for your dream. Get out there. Don't be afraid of it. It may be scary at first, but the more you get into it, the more you get to know the sector, the less scary it becomes and the more exciting it becomes. So I, I completely agree with both Patrick and, and um, Teresa. Reach for your team. <laughs> Mariana, I think uh, we need to go across to questions and answers. Yes, that is true. Uh, right. We do uh, the first one from our audience. Thank you so much for asking so many questions. <laughs> OK, so uh, one uh, would be to become a seafarer. How long is the academic duration and thereafter? How long is the practical duration? All right, um, Therese, Therese, you're in academics and I think we need to relate to the South African context here because we are in South Africa. It does it does change around the world. But please, Therese, if you would. Sure. Currently, the programs are on offer uh, between CPUT Maritime, a DUT Maritime, and Nelson Mandela University as well. So we offer bachelor degrees in nautical science and marine engineering. So that's three-year programs. And um, in addition, CPUT, uh, my department, we also offer an extended curriculum program, um, which we started this year. For example, if somebody is struggling in math and science and maybe not meeting the main requirement, you also have a second opportunity to join the bridging course for one year before you enter the main bachelor degree. 
Um, so those are the programs um, on offer, yes. And for our long attack, sorry, and also the practical duration. So internationally, the minimum sea time required is 12 months um, at sea, if, 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 that, if you want to be at sea. Of course, with these qualifications, if you want to be on land, you can decide to get 12 months um, logistics, transport um, experience as well in the on, la on land um, environment. And um, so, yes, that, that is a practical duration. Perfect. Uh, the following question um, is, what are the biggest challenges that seafarers uh, face today? Maybe Patrick? Patrick, do you, uh, Clamboy, would you like to take that one? Um, yes, I, I will. OK. I'm switching over to you. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine, you know, what, what I've gone through. The biggest challenges that seafarers would, um, would, would, would experience this time, and if we look at COVID-19, um, would be number one to be still stuck on board ships for long periods um, and not having an opportunity to do proper crew changing. Um, and then through that is, you know, your connect connectivity from home. You don't have any contact with your loved ones and that can cause some depression or just, you know, um, some challenges at home even. Um, second to that, you know, financially, um, some of seafarers would have lost their jobs uh, companies would be closing. They wouldn't have the means now to either, um, you know, do revalida revalidation on these certifications. Um, you know, thirdly, is it's just even when you're sure, the challenges that you have, you not even you're not even properly financially supported. Um, I think the the well-being and, and the welfare of 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 seafarers should also be maybe more extend extendedly supported from companies um, and to look at maybe training programs and support these seafarers to overcome some of these challenges. And I think that's, that's just a few that I can mention during this time uh, that some seafarers will be maybe experiencing because that's what we had during this period at our training center where candidates became unemployed. Um, the sector opens now maybe post post COVID, but they still don't have the means or the financial means to to acquire the revalidation on the certificates and how does that support come? So how do we support? We then apply for government funding and support these candidates um, through for unemployed grants, do the SCCW courses and support them getting back into the sector. That's one of the challenges how we support uh, support these, these seafarers. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I'm switching back to Patrick Wells. <laughs> uh, th thank you, Adriana. Too many Patricks in the room and we're easily confused, as can be seen. But like, I completely concur with, uh, with Patrick's response in, ter in terms of the challenges. But what's also very encouraging to see are the amount of organizations that uh, especially um, uh, with uh, the advent of COVID that have come on board and are supporting seafarers. There's non-profit organizations. Uh, there's a massive amount of support out there. Um, so it's not in the old days where you were completely left alone in this in this very scary world out at sea. Um, th th that's really changed a lot. M most seafarers now have access to internet, have access to uh, their families, um, irrespective of where they are there in the world. So I think that 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 has come a long way in supporting um, seafarers. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, very well. So thank you so much for um, our audience for your questions. Um, we will, um, of course, get in more contact with you uh, through the uh, to try to solve all the questions that we have in the chat, but any other details that you wish uh, we you want us to share across, we would be very delighted to do so. Um, I'm, I want to thank uh, you, Patrick, Theresa, and Patrick as well as the team here for sharing uh, your experience and for motivating our audience. You are truly inspirational. 
and a great role model in the uh, maritime industry for sure. To our audience, please make sure you stay in touch and write to the contact details uh, that will be displayed so we can offer you more support in training and consultancy service from either SCC SA or CPUT or TMI. And on behalf of TMI Simulation Solutions team that is behind the cameras and our guest speakers, we thank you so much for joining the webinar series. Uh, please join us next week, uh, Thursday, um, when we will be sharing with our uh, audience uh, what um, the, the, re the value and the essential role of women in maritime industry. Um, please, you can um, also register or go to the same link actually um, at the same time for next week, or you can visit our LinkedIn page as well, or our website, tmiseam.com. Uh, um, please make sure that you register uh, and share this video. Of course, um, I, I wanted to tell you that this session will be recorded and we will share the recording so you can also share with especially to youth because I think this was a very um, inspiring and motivational. So make sure you share this video with with all your colleagues. Thank you so much and until the next time. Thank you. Bye.